Hello there, welcome back to the channel, hope you're safe and well. In this video we will be testing some pellet myths to see if they're true. Let's roll those titles. Well, as you can see, uh, we're not in the garden today. We've come to uh, an indoor range uh, where we can shoot out to uh, up to 50 yards. We won't be shooting at 50 yards today. We'll be limit limiting it to 45 yards. But uh, I'll be setting out some targets and um, using a, a selection of selected pellets uh, to test some common pellet myths uh, that will, people will tell you. and. Um, We'll look at each in detail and see if they're true. I'm going to be using two uh, specific rifles today. The Daystate Wolverine and also the Old Faithful Air Arms S400. And uh, we'll be using the shooting rest today to try and eliminate uh, any human interference uh, with the shot as much as possible. So. Let's get going, shall we? Let's just go through uh, the, the basis of the conduct of the tests then. Uh, the stock pellet uh, throughout the test is the 8.4 JSB Exact Diablo in 0.177 calibre. We used two different rifles uh, during the tests, a regulated Daystate Wolverine and an unregulated Air Arms S400. The way that the tests were conducted uh, is I shot one pellet uh, from each sample before cycling back and repeating. So say for example I had um, three um, groups of pellets A, B and C. I would shoot one pellet from A, then one pellet from B, then one pellet from C and then go back shoot the second pellet from A, second pellet from B, second pellet from C. The reason that I did that is to avoid any um, disparity in the groupings due to the pressure drop. Shouldn't have been an issue for uh, the regulated rifle, uh, but may have been for the unregulated. And finally, I need to note the human factors. I mean, ideally, uh, it would have been best if I was able to clamp the rifles um, so that they didn't move between shots, so they were always aimed at the same fixed point. Um, I was not able to do that, which is why I chose to use uh, a fixed rest to achieve that as much as possible. Um, it wasn't ideal, um, particularly when shooting the, um, the S400, um, because of the eye relief on the scope. On the day state, I was using a zero eye relief scope, um, and that suited that format a lot better. Also, um, we need to talk about the aim points. Now, I uh, drew out uh, uh, dots on the target that I was aiming at. Uh, those dots were uh, five millimeter diameter dots uh, to simulate a pellet strike. Um, you'll note on some of the targets, uh, I did add some additional lines to try and make it easier to line up with the dots. Um, that wasn't that successful. Um, what I was doing was I was using uh, um, the first uh, low mill dot as the aim point so that the groups would fall below uh, the dot that I was aiming at so that I, I could always maintain the same aim point. The problem being that uh, on my scope, uh, on both the scopes, um, the mill dot aim point is uh, 0.2 mils in, in diameter and at 45 yards that equates to 10 millimeters so I'm looking at a 10 millimeter dot on the reticle and trying to aim that up with a 5 millimeter dot on the target so you need to bear that in mind that is obviously going to cause uh, some error with the benefit of hindsight I guess I should have been using uh, 10 millimeter dots on the target or thicker cross lines so that I could line up so that the aim point didn't disappear below the reticle. Uh, so that's one thing to bear in mind. There will be an error based on that. So that's how the tests were conducted then. Let's carry on. Uh, 
So the first one we're going to test then is whether the weight of your pellets makes any difference. Do you need to weigh your pellets? So we started off by, before coming down here to the range, I spent a while selecting some different weights of pellets and uh, we'll see that now quickly. We're going to weigh out some pellet samples for the test then. Um, I've just uh, set the scales up <coughs> with the, uh, the 50 gram weight, so I've calibrated those. I've got three tins. I'm going to be collecting 8.3 grain, 8.5 grain, 8.4 grain pellets um, with enough of a sample at least 10, at least 10 pellets in each tin uh, to carry out the test. So let's begin then. That's an 8.4. What I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, the first decimal point as the number for the tin. So that's an 8.46. So anything 8.40 to 8.49 will go in the 8.4 tin. Anything. 8.50 to 8.59 will go in the 8.5 tin. That one's a little bit light, that's a 2, 2 right for the 3, 8.46. I'm not going to do the whole tin, I'm just going to do enough pellets for the sample that we need to do the test. That's an 8.44. So Rather than bore you while I go through this, I am going to pause the video or stop the video and then that's an 8.36 and then come back when I'm done. Okay, so uh, I've gone through this uh, through this tin of pellets until I've got at least uh, 20 pellets in each of the weight groups. Took me a while to get up to uh, 20 of the 8.5s. You can see how the other tins uh, rate there. There's a 28.5s, a few more 8.3s, mostly 8.4s. So I'm going to take uh, 20 pellets from each of those weights uh, that I can use for testing. First up, then, I'm going to put 10 pellets from each group through the Wolverine and uh, measure the muzzle velocity with my chronograph. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot um, a five shot group with each of those um, collections of pellets, five shots through the Wolverine, five shots through the S400 at 45 yards, and then we'll uh, look at the uh, groups that we get and uh, see if pellet weight has made any significant difference. Let's have a look at the results from the velocity test then. You can hear, here you can see on this table, I've created a column for each of the samples. We've got the control, which are the pellets straight out of the tin. We've got the 8.3 grain something, 8.3 something grain pellets, 8.4 something grain pellets, 8.5s there. Uh, and I've show, shown you the uh, average uh, feet per second uh, the average foot-pounds, the spread and the standard deviation. Now there is a bit of an anomaly which you'll see there, uh, the fact that the 8.3 uh, sticks out, doesn't seem to follow the, um, 
the results of the uh, of the other pellets. I, I can't explain that. I mean, certainly if we were shooting with seven grain pellets, you would expect the muzzle velocity to be higher uh, because of the lighter pellet. Uh, but the 8.3 isn't that significantly lighter than the 8.4 and the 8.5s. So I can't really explain that. All I would say is that if the 8.3s really are going to be uh, that much faster than the 8.4s, then you would expect the 8.5s to be similarly that much slower, but they aren't. Okay, so let's uh, let's just bear in mind that that may be a bit of an anomaly. Um, what I've done is taken an average of all of those four results. When you look at that average and you see the spread and the standard deviation there, uh, if I just showed you that and hadn't shown you the individual columns, um, we probably would have concluded that there wasn't any significant difference uh, between the weights given the spread and the standard deviation. So, well, it, it, it is what it is. Um, we'll leave that one there. Let's take a look at the target then. Five shot groups through the Wolverine at the top, five shot groups through the S400 at the bottom. Control group on the left, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. Now, one thing to note is uh, these two shots here, uh, which were in this group with the S400, can't really explain those. Uh, they're, they're too close to be flyers. The only explanation that I can offer for those is that when I shot those two shots I used the wrong aim point on the reticle. Uh, I suspect that I used the second mill dot down instead of the first mill dot down because I wasn't concentrating. Um, so if you look how close they are and how they would fit into that it would be similar to these other groups anyway. So for the moment we'll ignore those and just consider this group. So you can see, looking at all these groups, there's nothing significantly different, really, between them. Uh, they're all around the same size. If we get the ruler out and uh, put the ruler on there, you can see that the, the bottom groups all around the 10 mil, top groups all around the 15 mil. So really nothing much to choose between them. So I think on that basis I'm prepared to say that's busted. For the next test then we're looking at pellet head sizes and whether the size of your pellet head makes a difference. For this we're looking at um, 4.51s, 4.52s and 4.53s. So just three samples on this test with both rifles. Let's get shooting. Let's take a look at the head size target then. Again, we've got the Wolverine shots at the top and the S400 at the bottom. Starting up with the 451s in the left column, 452s in the middle, 453s in the right. Uh, looking at the Wolverine, um, let's get the ruler out again on this. You can see they're all all pretty similar, nothing really to choose from those from the Wolverine. If we go down to the S400, um, got a bit of a flyer up here, can't explain that, it's probably just me shooting. One of the things when you're, when you're trying to shoot the perfect five uh, shot group time after time, sometimes uh, things let go a bit, so I'll put that down to me. Um, the 452s here in the S400, it's funny because it's 452s that I use through the S400 uh, and I, I would normally expect a better group from the, uh, than that. 
looking at the other two they're pretty similar on the whole there's nothing there that persuades me uh, that the head size uh, makes a significant difference uh, so I'm gonna say on this one that's busted Before we look at the target, just to give a quick uh, explanation of what the die number is. Now, uh, these JSB exact pellets are produced by uh, putting a, a lead ball inside a die uh, that presses the pellet into shape. And obviously they've got more than one die uh, because they've got more than one pellet machine uh, so that they can make sort of hundreds of pellets at a time. So if you turn the tin over you have this sticker on the back uh, all the manufacturers use a similar system you've normally got an eight figure number at the top um, and the way that that works is that the first two figures are the die number then you've got two fig uh, four figures they identify uh, the person that did the quality control and the person that packed the pellets and then the last two figures are the year uh, so this would be die 11 uh, made in 2022 and then underneath you've got the batch number which in this case is zero and the pellet head size 452 um, so that's that's where you find that information Let's uh, look at the results for the die number test then. And I must say, uh, this one looks as if it's pretty conclusive. I was quite surprised by this. Again, we've got the Wolverine at the top, the S400 at the bottom. The first column is die 7, uh, manufactured in uh, 2017. Second is die 11, manufactured in 2022. And the third is die 17, manufactured in 2023. You can see here that uh, the die 11 and the die 17 are pretty similar. But then when you look at die 7, I mean look at that group there and then this group here. There is one that's sort of out of that. But four shots in there at 45 yards. Let's get the ruler in to see. You know that's centre to centre. It's less than 10 mil. These are out at 20 uh, that's about 15 centre to centre and these are about 20 so um, I was quite surprised by this clearly die 7 has performed much better than both die 11 and die 17 that are very similar so I would uh, I would conclude that this is plausible So we're up to test four then. What's this one about? Well, major pellet manufacturers like uh, JSB don't just make pellets for themselves. They all, all also make pellets in their factory that are branded for uh, other companies, uh, such as um, Air Arms and uh, Weir Arc. So the question is, are the uh, original JSB pellets any different from the branded pellets? Um, we're going to do a test comparing uh, JSB against uh, Air Arms Field and Weir Arc FT Exact. So this test was to see whether um, uh, differently branded pellets all made in the same factory would perform differently. 
and we used the JSB own brand, uh, Air Arms Fields and uh, Weirark FT Exacts, um, which say all made in the JSB factory in Czechoslovakia. They were all taken, uh, unselected pellets taken straight out of the tin. So we can see looking at the top here uh, with the Wolverine uh, you've got a three pellet group there, a couple that have gone off to the, uh, to the side flyers. Um, these groups are similar. Yeah, are they that far out that you can say that there's a difference? Perhaps slightly um, the branded JSB branded pellets slightly better. When we move down to the 400, five, <laughs> five shot group at 45 yards with an S400, that's not bad. I love that rifle. Got one slightly out there. If that if that had been in with those, then they would be similar groups. And, and we're not too far out on the Weir Arc. Uh, certainly, I would suggest from this, looking at this, that you could say, what we're going to say. Yeah, using the name brand pellets from the factory uh, this suggests that they're going to be slightly better uh, than the other branded pellets but only slightly so we'll give that a plausible the final test then is to see whether damaged pellet skirts actually affect the accuracy of the pellet if you're anything like me, when you're selecting a pellet to put in your rifle, particularly when you're shooting a comp, if you pull out one where the skirt doesn't look perfectly round, there's a bit of a dent in it or it's twisted or uh, mangled a little bit, you tend to either throw it away or stick it back in the pouch to use for plinking. So does it actually make a difference? So you can see here we've got a selection of uh, five decent pellets and five mangled pellets. I'm going to shoot them through the 400 just for kicks and giggles. The final target to look at then, this was uh, a curiosity more than anything. Um, this was shot through the S400 um, with selected pellets straight out the tin. Um, the ones that I would normally select as being fine to shoot and the ones that I would avoid shooting, I'd either put them back in my pouch or throw them away because the skirts were distorted. Uh, this was shot with my crosshairs on the dot. Uh, which is why the groups are a little bit lower down on the target. But what's interesting is that the uh, the distorted skirts is a little bit of a, tight, a tighter group. But again, there's not much in it. So clearly, uh, those pellets that you think are going to cause flyers are not going to cause flyers. They're going to perform just as well as the normal pellets. It may be because... The lead that JSB use, or the the mixture of lead and antimony, is soft enough that so that the uh, that the when the rifle fires, the blast of air that ejects the pellet is uh, is going to reform the skirt inside the rifling, so it becomes less of an issue. But um, an interesting one, nevertheless. So we'll give that one a busted. We're going to finish up in the shed then. That's all I've got for you on this one. Hope you found that interesting. Might be a bit contentious in places, I suppose, and uh, you might categorically disagree with me. Let me know in the comments. Just before we go, uh, I'm racing towards the 1,000 subscriber mark, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please give it a go. doesn't cost you anything. Just hit that subscribe button, and then if you want to be notified of future videos, you can hit the bell as well. Other than that, uh, all I would say with this one was I didn't realise how difficult it was going to be and how much concentration it would take to shoot, to, tr well, to try and shoot so many consistent uh, five pellet groups all in a day. It was, uh, it was pretty tiring, so take that into account when you look at some of the, uh, the groups that towards the end started to drift out a little bit. Sorry about that. Anyway, 
that's all from me and uh, hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.